Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we do is download the Motorola drivers from their website. Wait for that to install. There we go. Next thing we're going to do is download the Microsoft.NET framework of it. Let that install. It'll take a little while. Uh, I already had it installed, so it, my only option was to repair, but it'll look ag almost exactly the same for you. Alright, now we're done. And we're going to install a copy of the Radiocom software after we restart the computer. You must restart, so go ahead and do that now. Alright, we're restarted. Now we're going to click install and run. Now I'm doing this on a Windows 64-bit installation, so it's going to throw a few errors, but it's possible to do. Just gotta wait for it to install, and then we'll have to troubleshoot compatibility once it gets somewhere. Alright, now we're done. It's going to open up the readme file, but just go ahead and exit out of that once it pops up. And click finish. Now, like I said, troubleshoot compatibility. Try the recommended settings. and start the program. Go ahead and save those settings while it's loading up and just close out of that and click next. It'll pop this window up every time uh, on the Windows 64-bit installations. I'm not sure if it'll pop up every time on the 30-bit 2-bit systems because I don't have any of those at my place of business. It'll pop up a few of these error messages. Just click OK. And eventually we'll get it to the main user interface. And here we go. This is the main screen. Don't touch anything unless you see me do it in the video. We're going to go to the main and we're going to select the chipset driver. It's under the com or the CDMA, and it's the very bottom one, the chipset base with Android. Once you've done this, it'll reload the screen, and now you need to go ahead and plug in your phone. Once you get it plugged in, pull down the menu bar and select USB connection. Select PC mode, and then we're going to continue. It'll pull up the Vcast media manager page, just go ahead and exit out of that. When you see that green light come on, it means that the software is connected to your phone. Now I'm just going to minimize this and real quick. Now use the arrows to navigate over to the P2K1 tab. And over here in the STLEM and RDLEM category, we're going to enter the element ID of 8040, the record ID of 1, and the offset of 0 with a length of 128. Be sure you select decimal entries first so it doesn't change the number like it did in this video. Now we're going to go ahead and hit the RDLEM key. It stands for read. We're going to select this text string that it's spit out at us. And I'm going to open up Notepad in just a second and paste that in to, into Notepad so that I have a copy of it. And I'd recommend that you copy each data key that you modify into this Notepad document and save it somewhere in case you want to sell the phone back or send it in for repairs. Just move this out of the way real quick. 
Now we're going to change the element ID to 41 and read that data. Then we're going to go ahead and paste in the cell key from the ID 8040 to here. Then we're going to hit the STLEM key, which stands for write. And we're going to do this again for the 842. the cycle of reading the data and writing the data. Once again using the same key from the element ID of 8040. And then one final time doing it for element ID 8043. What this does is it's telling the networks that all the data that's being sent through the phone is from your mobile device, not from any devices that are tethered to it. Go ahead and hit the restart button up there in the top center and your phone will restart. It'll say something like no SIM card or no signal available at first. Go ahead and give it a few seconds. But then when it comes back you can pop up the menu icon, click on settings, wireless networks, tethering and hotspots, and then just tap on the mobile hotspot icon and it'll start to open up your hotspot. If you want to configure some settings you can go ahead and click on there and then it'll pull in this menu where you want to click on configure the hotspot. This will allow you to change the network ID, whether or not you want security, a password, the broadcast channel, as well as the uh, network addresses that are assigned to the devices that connect. You might have seen a few menu options that you don't have on your, compu on your phone. That's because I have rooted my phone and put on a custom ROM, but I assure you that this can be done even with a stock Android phone. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to my videos.